Good morning, everybody. Bujo. Hello, this is Neshi Lokat. Welcome to Star Nation Organization's main fan page. We're doing the, the morning live stream for the card draw for the day, the energy that's most important for us to know about. Um, and so welcome. It's Monday, uh, July 9th, and, uh, 2018. <laughs> 2018. And so welcome. It is um, another really gorgeous day here. You know, I keep clapping about that because we've had one after another and, you know, a lot of gratitude there. Um, I know this is kind of missing the rain thing, but hey, take the sunshine when you can in the warm weather, right? Because we have mid 80s today and uh, it's July. Can't get better than that. Hey, Mervyn Kelly's here. I am Kelly's here in the house. Hi, Mervyn, Nellie, how are you doing? And Stephanie just joined us. It is um, an interesting morning here. You know, Mondays Mondays have a different feel to them because um, um, it's really all about mom in the morning, um, Mondays and Thursdays. And um, this morning is no different. Uh, it, I came off from uh, uh, yesterday. Yesterday was... Um, Last night we went to go look for the elk here in, um, actually it's, it's called the Black River um, Elk Herd. And um, it, they were recently released um, here in Wisconsin, I think three years ago, maybe four. And, uh, and so we get to go out and look at them every once in a while, find them out there in the wild. Um, we were hoping to see, see one of the calves if we could. We didn't. Um, in fact, there was, no, there was an elk no-show. <laughs> And so lots of deer, lots of fawns. Um, my sister-in-law is, a, is a, um, a photographer, and so she was taking lots of pictures of the fawns. And I tell you, those fawns are so cute. Hey, Stephanie, good morning. Good morning to everybody. Um, so coming off from a weekend of, of family stuff and magazine, oh, my God. I got to tell you this, the magazine, the uh, July issue, we are inches, inches away of, of being complete and ready to publish tomorrow on July 10th. The 10th of every month is when we publish. Um, and so today is all about testing the magazine. Um, because our magazine is digital, um, which means that um, you can use your your smartphone and your tablets for the digital version, but you can also use your any device really for the PDF and web viewer. But um, what's unique about our magazine is that embedded in the magazine are um, hyperlinks, and so. Um, when you watch the videos, um, you don't have to go out to YouTube and come back. You can watch them right in the magazine. And so um, I just optimized um, both the text version, which you see on your phone, and the PDF version, which is what you see on your tablets, and also um, for the PDF. So um, I finished those on uh, Sunday afternoon. That takes me, oh, I don't know, four, four, about four hours, four to six hours, depending on, you know, what's going on with them. But so now we're at the very final stage, and that final stage is to test the magazine, and that is testing all of the links, all the hot links, all the videos to make sure they work, and checking one last time for any um, edits that need to be done, last minute kind of stuff, things that kind of jump off the page and say, oh, no, it's wrong. <laughs> And so that's uh, that's what I'm doing after we're done with the, the live stream today. And so it's always an exciting time. Really, it is. I love this part because um, we get to see this creation um, that is um, many different people bring their wisdom and their experience together and their gifts and all their gifts together. And we get to create something that is, I think is beautiful and is helpful. Um, and so this is, uh, Tuesday is always one of my favorite days because it's publishing day. Yeah. And so Mary S is in the house and so is Elise. Good morning, ladies. And good morning to Mary Ann too. Um, so Mary Ann who has been watching the live since streams pretty much, I probably since we started them in May, um, so good morning, Marianne. 
So <clears throat> for those of you that may just be joining us, see if I hold this right, is that right? Oh, upside down. <laughs> Using Jamie Sam's cards called the Sacred Path cards for the morning draw and also her second deck, which is medicine cards. And the medicine cards are um, the animal relatives that uh, help us to understand the sacred path deck and um, for assistance. And you can tell this particular book has been around for a while. <laughs> it's kind of, it's well used and well loved. Um, the This book or the, this deck of cards it was published in uh, the first time was 1988, and the second time was in 1999. So they've been around for a while, a while. And this one, the Sacred Path Cards, was 1990. Um, so these have been around for a while, but you know what? The information is just as relevant today as it was two decades ago or three. Um, the only thing is that some of the some of the the jargon, some of the vocabulary, and how things are put, you can tell that it was written in the past decade or two. Yeah, but but the essence of the cards are still there; they're still intact. Hi, Elise. Amy Daniels is here too. Good morning. But that's uh, but it's not at it's not at all good today. It's not. Oh. Sorry to hear that, Amy. Maybe maybe we can help you a little bit to that. Marianne says, hi. She looks forward to each day. Yay. Thank you, Marianne. I appreciate that. Um, you know, somebody asked me in the comments from yesterday's show about what do you do with, because she's had the same deck of cards for that many years, since 1988, 1990. And she says they're very worn, very, very worn. And if it were me, would I replace them? And my reply to that was yes, I would. Um, only because only because they're so worn. It sounded like that, that they were even kind of hard to shuffle because they're so worn. Um, but I would hold a little, I would hold a ceremony um, to, to thank the cards in the spirit, um, who helps you with your card reading or card draws. Um, and then I would have a sacred fire and I would put them in the fire after, um, that, you know, I would already have my new deck and then I would, um, hold another ceremony, ceremony at a different time from my new deck, um, to ask for a blessing for the deck and for them to always work with the light and only the light. Um, so it's a card dedication to the light. Um, yeah, I know that probably some people wouldn't wouldn't do that, but you know, I think um, you know when when we're worn out and tired, <laughs> a lot of us retire, <laughs> and so why not why not the deck of cards um, and start something uh, uh, with a new energy because we are in the new energy. We're we're um, with Grandmother Earth, and she is in the fourth dimension, heading into the fifth. And so um, we want to raise our vibration to to come close to matching hers or matching it. You know, that's that's what we're here to do. So today's card draw we've had before, of course. And this is what came this morning, the East Shield. And it's about illumination and clarity. We've had this card a couple of times. The um, eagle is resides in the East. Um it's the eagle energy medicine um, for the east. Um, it said that the eagle is the messenger between us and the creator. Uh, the eagle flies the closest to the creator. It flies at very, very high altitudes. And the color of the east is yellow for illumination and for the sunrise. And it's where we greet the, the, the creator every day. It's a new, a new energy every day. Oh, Okay, good. Nellie is saying that he's done that with uh, crystals too. Yes, you know um, when when they have fulfilled their role in our lives, um, their assistance. Um, I think that it's the kind thing to do, and to be grateful, and to be grateful, and uh, um, tell them that you know a blessing for them, and so that they they can go on to their next experience as well. Um, yeah. I'm glad you do that too. Now, you know, there's, um, I have returned crystals to the earth, but not because um, 
they're worn out. One, sometimes they ask to be returned. Um, others, um, others, it's, yeah, our, t our time together is just done. They're not worn out. It's just that we're, we're finished with what we started to do together. Um, sometimes I gift them to other people. Um, other times I return them to the earth. I put some tobacco in and I cover them and return them back to grandmother. So the Eastern Shield, um, it's about illumination and clarity. Um, it also is the place, according to the Seneca tradition, from where Jamie Sams writes from. Those are her roots. Uh, the Seneca Nation um, is from the eastern part of the United States, Turtle Island. Um, and uh, the Seneca are part of the Haudenosaunee, which many people know better as the Iroquois Nation, right? The civilized tribes. <laughs> so anyway, um, at the eastern part of the, the medicine wheel, the Seneca say that there is a golden door. The golden door. And the golden door is a place... Um, that you can enter and exit. And if you exit, it takes you to um, other dimensions, other, other universes, right? Um, if you come in the Eastern door, that means that you, some people would might call it reincarnation, um, that you have, you're taking on another, another physical life from spirit. And um, the, the eastern door is the door to the blue road, according to the Seneca, the blue road, which is a spirit road. Why am I telling you this? Is because when I read the information again, this is what jumped out at me for today. And today, um, it's about the golden door. Um, and I'm just going to share this piece with you. Um, Jamie Sams writes that in the Seneca tradition, the East is also the home of the golden door. This door leads to all other levels of imagination and awareness. To pass through the golden door is to see beyond the mundane and to touch Father Sky. Um, the golden door, there is no limitation, no hesitation, and no fear. Fear cannot exist in the presence of the golden love of the Grandfather Son. She goes on to say that um, independence is the keynote of the Eastern Shield. It allows us to seek the ideas that bring forth enlightenment. It is in the East that we challenge and conquer our greatest lessons in the forward movement. And for me, the East on the wheel is about mental thought. It's the spirit of air. And um, we begin our walk on the blue road or the black road that goes east to west and it's part that road is the the road that holds all of our life lessons everything that we experience on our earth walk um and it is the balance it's our our journey to balance our mind with our hearts our thoughts with our our heart right and um, the balance between our conscious self and our higher conscious self, um, allowing, um, allowing our soul or our heart to lead and for our ego or our mind to be the servant of the heart. We work together. It's in that wholeness, right? In that wholeness. And we've been talking about this for a few weeks already. And so when I when I saw this, I was thinking about um, what does this mean for us, though, in for today, in the energy for today. And I think that it lies. The feeling I had when my I asked my my spiritual team about it is that it is about not having fear and having um what does she say here um she says that there's no limitation no hesitation and no fear fear cannot exist in the presence of the golden love of the of grandfather's son and so and we've been we've been talking about that about um it started with the card counting coup or the coup card 
um, and that is in the old days, the warriors would ride as close to their opponent as possible to be able to touch them. And it was to show them that they had no fear. It was the bravest act. It wasn't the act of actually killing your opponent. It was the act of riding up to your opponent and touching them, showing no fear. And, um, and in modern time, I believe that we count coup in the way that our ancestors did. Um, but our opponent really is our shadow selves. And those, those um, energies, those emotions, those thoughts, especially the thoughts about fear and anger and jealousy, you know, the shadow side of ourselves. And that when we face them and to neutralize them, um, maybe even uh, transmute them into a higher vibrational thought or feeling. And we do that every single day. We all do. We all do. There's uh, decisions that we make that, you know, we might be fearful of making. Um, and so a lot of times it holds us in limbo. We can't go forward and we can't go back. We're afraid to make that decision and we're afraid to go back. <laughs> so we're kind of stuck in neutral. Um, Jamie Sams is writing about the Eastern Shield and that it's about illumination and clarity that when we turn to our spiritual team for assistance, they can actually help us with that clarity piece. We can ask them, show me this situation with clarity. I want to know with clarity so I can make a good decision. What is the best decision for me at this time? My next best step is what I used to always ask. Hey, Marty's with us. Good morning, Marty. And Rochelle is, says, hi, Rochelle. Rochelle, Rochelle is such an, a sweetheart. She is helping a good friend of hers and drove her friend to an appointment. And uh, she's waiting. She's patiently waiting for her friend to be done with her appointment. Um, and so she gets to join us from there. Um, and Elise is saying, that is a bit weird. As years ago, I had a very vivid dream about a blue lady. Still not sure why, but not a live person of a spirit vision. Yeah, a blue lady. Um, all right. So for me, um, those blue people are people that come from the planet Cirrus, the blue star, the dog star. Yeah. Could be a visitor from home. It could be um, a teacher. Um it could be someone that is uh, connecting with you um, to help help you with your spiritual path, your physical walk here. You know, the only way that to really know for sure is to is to um, make contact with them, ask them to come see you, so you can ask, ask your higher self um, what that's all about. That's another easy path to take, is to go into meditation and. Um, connect with that part of yourself, your soul self that already knows, already knows. Yeah. So um, Jamie, Jamie is talking about enlightenment in the spirit of the East. She says that um, to understand the East shield is to invite eagle into your heart and you know when you think about the eagle and how high it flies and the kind of eyesight it has it can see for so many miles it's long distance that they can see and so they see this with clarity but they also fly with the mission between us and the creator um, taking our our prayers uh, our requests to the creator that is a common belief among a lot of Native American tribes here on Turtle Island. Um, the eagle has always been held in high esteem um, for many, 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 many generations, long before it became the symbol of the United States. Yeah. But, you know, it's got, it's got this vision, um, and that's part of the clarity. It's part of the clarity. 
For those people who are just joining, this is the card that we that was given to us today by Spirit. It's called the East Shield, and it's about illumination and clarity. Okay, and I really do believe that this particular card today, the essence of it, um, is about about um, facing our fears, um, asking to see with clarity. Um, so that you can move forward without hesitation. Um, I think that's what it's about. It's about facing ourselves. Um, those parts of ourselves that sometimes we ignore or um, we procrastinate about. We know that we should heal this, but I don't know if I really want to go there. <laughs> because it could be it could be emotionally painful for me to go there to heal that aspect of myself. And so we procrastinate about it. We might notice it. We might know about it. We might even have gotten synchronicities about it, signs about it. And we choose not to do anything right now about it. And so right now stretches out into days and weeks and months and, and then sometimes even years. Um, and I think that this card is, is about shining that light, your light, into your own shadow self and, and saying, okay, how do we deal with this? And getting your spiritual team to assist you. Yeah. Okay, Rochelle, you have a good day too. She's got to go. Sounds like her, her friend is done with her appointment. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the flip side. Okay, Rochelle? Drive careful. Be safe. And Elias says, I can do, do it better without a mirror. Hello, <laughs> When, yeah, <laughs> that is that is the way to go, is not to have somebody mirror it to you. But, you know, um, we're in this together. We really are. And I know it, I know it's hard. <laughs> it's difficult to 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 say that the 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 people or the one person in your life that has been the pain in your backside or the pain in your neck. <laughs> Um, the one that that you can't hardly stand to hear their voice, and you're going, you're closing your eyes, and you're going, oh no, not that again. Or you feel the clenching in your stomach, you know. Those are the souls who agreed that they would play that part for us, so that we would get that nudge when we needed it to heal what needed to be healed so we can move forward. So we can continue on our, our soul contract, on our, on our medicine walk here, right? Our spirit walk. So even though they are difficult, a challenge for us, and they're, they are mirroring something to us, um, on a soul level, um, they love us a lot to put themselves into that position where they know that um, on the mental and emotional level that either they're, they're, they're risking being hated, which is another part of our shadow self, um, knowing that they're going to be causing us inflicting emotional mental pain um and yet this is the hard one <laughs> is that yet at a soul level they are the ones who love us the most it sounds so contradictory doesn't it one of those things that are really feels like it that's what they call hayoka medicine <laughs> the contrary The opposite. Yeah, that's a whole show in itself, isn't it? We should do one. I should do one of those. What do you think about that? That'd be a difficult show to do. Which means we probably should do it, right? I'll think about that. Um, I th let's see. Do I? I think I have. I might be able to fit it in this month, toward the end of the month. If not, definitely the first part of August. <laughs> Nellie's going, yes. 
<laughs> Are you talking about having a show about this? Yeah, Nellie, you're going to, Nellie, okay. Mervyn Kelly is one of our live stream show hosts. He hosts From Star to Stone, which airs tomorrow morning here in the States at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, and so, and, and Mervyn and I have co-hosted um, a series um, for caring for elderly parents. And so, yes, we are aware and um, I don't want to say comfortable <laughs> because it's not comfortable to, to, to have topics that are uh, on our shows that are uncomfortable, difficult. I know, Elise, this isn't a show. <laughs> Elise calls it Neshi's non-show because I haven't really named it and I don't really promote it like I do the other shows, which is a non-show. All right, here is, the, here is, see, I digress. Here is the application for this card. We'll show it again. Here we go. Uh, Jamie Sams writes that um, this card shows us a need for clarity in some part of your life. It may also mark a time of illumination when suddenly things begin to fit together and make sense to you. The illumination of the East can also be asking you to assist another in finding clarification. It marks a time of new freedoms that come from wiping the mud from your eyes and seeing with an eagle eye. Okay, And I do believe that this is about ourselves and um, facing those things in our lives, the shadow parts of ourselves, um, to have more illumination, to illuminate. Now, as I was um, sitting there contemplating that card after reading it, I had the deck in my lap yet. And um, as, and I was kind of, you know, I don't want to say absent-mindedly, but I was uh, sitting there thinking about the illumination of the East and what I, what we just talked about. And I was kind of shuffling the cards, but not really shuffling them with conscious intent. Let's put it that way. And this is the card that slid out. It didn't pop out. I didn't have to go chasing it across the floor, um, but it slid out and it's, it's called a shawl. It's returning home. I mean, look at that artwork on there. It's gorgeous. And we've had this card before. And this card um, is about um, a ceremony that's held by the Paiute Nation, which is out west. Um, I want to say it's like... Um, Utah area, something like that. Um, it's a ceremony that they do for those people who are returning back to a traditional way of life. Okay. Because, you know, back in the 30s, it started way back then for us in modern day. Um, which means that um, Native people have been, had been on reservations for at least a couple of generations or more, all right, or more, probably three or four by that time. <clears throat> Excuse me. They, um, in the 30s, you know, during the Great Depression, it, it was hard all over the United States, all over the world. Um, and many people left their home areas where they grew up and in search for work and kind of grapes of wrath kind of situation, okay? Well, there was a lot of uh, natives who left their home area too looking for work. And many of those um, indigenous people who left for the cities um, were looking for work. And so that meant they left their families. They left um, the many times they, they left their culture behind because when you lived in the city, you weren't a part of any of the ceremonies. You might do some ceremonies on your own, um, but your life certainly changed. Okay, so that was in the 30s. And then you moved into the 40s, and even more people were leaving um, the countryside 
and moving through the cities. We're heading into World War II, you know, and um, that's about the time my parents were doing that trek, looking for work. My dad had just gotten back from uh, World War II in 45, I think it was, something like that. No, my brother was born in 44. Anyway, they met in Milwaukee. And my mom had been in Milwaukee for quite some time already, about five or six years. And um, and so they were a part of that, um, leaving um, where they grew up and heading to a, a bigger city to find work, to have work. And so this shawl ceremony that the Piates do for their people are those, those Native people, their tribal people who who uh, leave the city life and um, modern conveniences sometimes to head back home to the reservation, to their family community, um, where there's a ceremony held for them because they made the decision to go back um, to live with the traditional way of life, a different lifestyle. And Jamie Sams writes about the shawl, taking on the shawl as um, going home, going home. And not necessarily um, in a physical sense. The essence of the card is about being honest with yourself and finding that home within yourself. In other words, your heart. Um, and taking on the shawl is is taking up um, a life that is more of your true reflection, of your true vibration. And so if if it is in the city, that's fine. That's fine. As long as you're you're living from your heart and you're 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 being kind and doing good deeds, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and do no harm is what comes to mind. But you are um, using your gifts and um, being creative and experience your life through your gifts and, and working on your soul contract, right? That's what she's talking about, returning home. And it's not necessarily um, you have to be an indigenous person to be able to do that. Um, and so when I looked at that card and the, the essence of that card related to the spirit of or the the East Shield, um, we're, we're, spirit is saying we you know to really take a look at what's home for us because home the physical home can be anywhere as long as we're in our hearts, right? Home is where the heart is. That I think that's where that saying comes from. Stephanie's saying, I needed this this morning. Ah, you're welcome. You're very welcome, Stephanie. Got to thank um, Spirit for that because they're they're the ones that are selecting the cards, you know. And and as I'm reading the information about it, I, you know, and talking to them, um, pointing me in in a direction um, because there's a lot we could talk about it. But this t for today, the energy for today and the essence of the card is about that using our own light to illuminate our shadow selves and to clear the debris and the interference of our frequency, of our gifts, and so that we can have that sense of being home, of being home within ourselves. There's a part in here with the shawl that I found. Let's see if I can find it. Um, she was talking about, um, let's see, she says that in taking the shawl, we are taught that the Earth Mother loves all her children and welcomes everyone home, no matter how naughty they've been. We are not here to heal Mother Earth. We are, we, she is quite capable of doing that herself. We are here to heal ourselves so that we may discover our roles in creation. This is not to say that the two-legged shouldn't be, shouldn't be mindful of assisting in cleaning up any damage that has been done. On the contrary, um, that it is a part of our human role as children of Earth. 
Each person who takes the shawl comes into alignment. We're being taught to acknowledge the beauty in each unique expression of creation, whether it's human, the two leggeds, or all some you know a green green relative, a stone person, um, a tree relative. It doesn't matter, or even your worst enemy. The shawl may be too heavy for some people to carry on their shoulders if it means that the harmony must be lived daily without exceptions. And I think that's the part that we're, we need to look at. To look at. Um, so it's not a heavy shawl that you're putting on or taking up. And that's the illumination. That, that's the facing of our shadow selves and healing what needs to be healed Clearing the debris, right? The interference. Mary, Mary saying debris and interference. I love that. Yeah. And Amy is saying, yes, spirit is tuned in perfectly with these cards today. They certainly are, aren't they? Um, Jamie Sams also writes, taking on the shawl also means that one is willing to go, uh, is to exchange information and then allow all traditional teachings to live so that the goodness of each can be shared by many. It's, it's time to let go of the I and embrace the we, capital W, we. Um, and that, that is just another way of saying that there's many paths up the mountain. Not every, not, there's just not one path, there's many. And we're all headed in the same direction. Um, and so why not, why not be um, open to hearing about someone else's journey and path, to enlighten, to see it from another direction, another perspective, right? Doesn't mean that you have to change your, your beliefs unless you want to, unless you want to. So I, th I do believe is that the shawl is about, in conjunction with the, the East Shell, is about, um, is about healing those aspects of ourselves to be in more of an alignment and so that we feel at home within ourselves. Within ourselves. Like uh, the old saying is that, you know, being comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. Did you know that the word skin was it comes from the 1970s? <laughs> the use of it for from Native Americans. I think I told you guys that, didn't I? I think I did. Um, there, <laughs> we used to call ourselves skins. Some of us still do. It's because you know I grew up in the '70s, and so when I hear that, I, I certainly can relate to it. Um, yeah, because we, we, I mean, walking by each other. Some, you know, honestly, just because you're Native American does not mean that you know all Native Americans everywhere, because we don't. Um, and especially growing up in a tourist town, Wisconsin Dells. There's a lot of people. And um, and so when you see somebody who looks Native American and you just kind of go like this to them, right, skin, is that they'll do it back to you. <laughs> um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, funny. Dating myself there. All right, so our animal relative. When I asked who could help us to understand the essence of the East Shield and the supporting card shawl um, with clarity and how how we can best use the essence of those cards. Okay. And this this is who came. Wild boar. Okay. <laughs> and I have to say, when at the surface, it's like, really? A wild boar. To help us understand the essence of the East Shield. Wild boar, according to Jamie Sams, is about confrontation. Confrontation. She says, to face and conquer the self-important and deceitful beast within. So there again, it's our shadow selves. Yep, our shadow selves, so that um, we we can um, sense and feel and others will sense and feel our true vibration or at least closer to our true vibration. Um, and that when we get 
to the point where we can sense and feel our gifts in the way that we were meant to use them here in this particular lifetime. That's our true vibration, or at least close enough to it, right? And so she says that, um, is that uh, always, always confront the weakness weaknesses within yourself. So it's counting coup again. It's, it's counting coup on those shadow aspects of ourselves. And so it's almost like um, spirit has been telling us the same thing in different ways for two weeks. Two weeks. I think there's, because, you know, when I ask for the card, my intention is, is to please show me the energy that's most important for us to know today for the highest good. And so the essence of that card for the highest good. And then I ask about the the relative, the animal relative who can help us, assist us in understanding with more clarity and depth um, the essence of that card that we ju that was just drawn. <laughs> and so for two weeks, I you know it might even be even three weeks, um, but this is the same message coming from different perspectives for us to see to sense and so i i do believe that this is the importance importance of the energy that's being shown to us is it's time it's past time it's past time it is um important for us to not procrastinate about healing what needs to be healed and, and facing what needs to be faced uh, <laughs> all right, so because, because those that are awake in any amount, in any degree, to their spiritual path and about the ascension to your true vibration and higher, um, because Grandmother Earth, Kokomis Kikan, is already in the fourth dimension and are already heading into the fifth dimension. And for us to be with her and to complete what we came here to do, we have to vibrate alongside her. She's our mom. She's our grandma. So if we want to stay with her, we have, we have to vibrate in, in the same frequency. They're saying the range of that frequency. Okay. Mm. So whatever we do, However we heal, whatever we manifest to come into our lives um, and through that healing, um, we ground to the earth plane because we're here in an, in an earth body. We ground it to the, the earth plane. And we're being reminded that to ground it in the fourth dimension, not the third, <laughs> fourth, <laughs> the fourth dimension. You know, and, and you just have to think it. You just have to or say it out loud. And um, spirit already knows what that is. Our soul already knows what that is. It's our conscious mind that needs to tag along and say, oh, yeah, that forgot. We're not in the third dimension anymore. We're in the fourth. All right. So she says that uh, the boar, wild boar, teaches, uh, its medicine teaches us to confront human weaknesses and to change them into strengths. The willingness to confront fears, the challenges at hand, and the uncomfortable circumstances. Courageously standing tall without running from the situation that life presents. This is a powerful card indeed. Wild boar. Helping us to face the fears, the challenges, to have courage. saying that uh, we're being asked to confront anything or anybody that you have been avoiding. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a long list, right? So what are the, when, when I say that, to, conf to confront somebody or something that you've been avoiding, what's the first thing that pops into your head? 
And it's usually the one that you're going, oh, no, not that one. Let me choose a different one. No, it's the first one that pops into your mind. What is that for you? That's the one that, that needs your attention the most. Hmm. Yay, right? But we're in this together, so, you know, we can we can help support each other. We can cheer each other on. We can say, you can do it. You have all the tools that you already need to, to do it. We all do. All right. So courage. Um, she says, confront your feelings regarding some situation that makes you nervous or causes discomfort and brings you bring yourself the peace of its closure. So once we have it, the challenge is met, we've got the clarity, the illumination, the gem in all of that is peace. We feel we have a sense of peace. <laughs> Amy Daniels is saying, oh, please, not that one, work, student Workers at work. Yes, that one. Oh, my gosh. And Elise said, I bet you could talk all day and not run out of your volumes of wisdom. I don't know about that. Because um, honestly, honestly, you guys, yes, there's some, my experience comes into it. Yes. But all of this is coming from spirit. I'm the conduit. Oh, they're so funny. Mouthpiece. I'm the mouthpiece. I'm the one that is using the gift of my voice. That's it. Because I, I am doing the exact same thing you guys are doing. I am here to learn. I am here to apply my gifts. I'm here to confront Count Coup on my, my shadow self. All of 2017 wasn't fun. <laughs> I thought I, I, I came really close to breaking. In fact, my, my husband probably would say she broke. Yeah. Um, and on the other side of it, I'm more me than I've ever been. Yeah. And it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. I got to find more time to play, though. That's top of the list. <clears throat> All right. So Jamie Sam goes on to write that it's insisting this card, the essence of this card, the spirit of the card is insisting that we be fully present and mindful of what's happening and why. That if we drew the card, you already possess the courage needed to confront all that life offers. Just remember where you hid that courage to actively embrace the your issue you cannot reclaim um, your spirit energy if you don't actively confront it half the battle is won through the warrior's willingness to acknowledge and accept the whole truth at all times even if that truth is like oh my god really <laughs> if, if the truth and see, and that's what, what popped into my mind when I asked you guys, what's the first thought that comes to you? Um, I have to confront the lies that have been said about me by other people. And so how do you do that? Because I don't really care what they think. But on the other hand, it's not the truth. So... And it's about trust. And so that that is my next my next piece to learn about and to confront and to gain the wisdom from that experience. And I take a deep breath. Knowing that and I repeat to myself, I know, I got this. I've got the tools that I need to do this. I just have to take that first step. 
even if it's a baby step, it's a step. And so um, she's also saying, Jamie is saying that we need to evaluate any avoidant mechanisms that we have. And we all have them. What do we do to procrastinate the avoidance mechanisms? You know, because I, I, I could find a million different things to do. Okay, so this is exaggeration. <laughs> I could find a million different things to do at home in my house rather than doing my bookkeeping because I don't really enjoy it. That's why I hired somebody to help me with my bookkeeping because it wasn't getting done. It, I was using so many avoidance mechanisms to do that. And so that's a, that's a source of my, re, uh, of my energy in all kinds of ways. And so I had to deal with it, right? Yeah. Um, denials can vanish when you confront them with unflinching honesty. If some lie is present, now is a time to come clean with yourself or another. Cut through the feelings of helplessness and weaknesses. Those sharp tusks from the wild boar can cut into the heart of the matter and reveal the val val valiant can't read valiant warrior self that you may have unwittingly abandoned. So wild boar, that card, the essence of it to help us understand the essence of the East Shield and the shawl, taking up the shawl. I think the wild boar card is to say, get off your backsides. Yep, it's that nudge from spirit. It's it's time we face the things that are blocking us the most, those barriers. And most of those times, those barriers are something that we put there ourselves, to be honest. Yeah. But you know what? We have help. We have our spiritual team. We have healers. And Star Nation's uh, community are abundant in healers and light workers. And so, and there's somebody close to you, I'm sure, that you could turn to. And if nothing else, we have Polly Joel Bay and Julie Hedges and Mervyn Kelly and um, Orchun Franklin and Carl Franklin. We, we have a lot of big medicine people here for assistance, right? We do. Amy Daniels is saying, if you don't care what others think of you, the lies and gossip and all that stuff can hurt you big time. Um, honestly, uh, I don't really care their opinion about me. No. But what I care about when I hear the lie for myself and I know it's a lie because I was present during an event and how um, when in the retelling of it <laughs> it's like it's it was so twisted you know and so and the only part of that that has to do with me in in that retelling is um, not calling calling that person on the lie to say that's that's not what happened and you know that's not what happened and so by by my silence about it you know it's like I am an accomplice of, of, in, in in a way yeah. And so, you know, that and, and and that is a snowball effect <laughs> because now I'm hearing, you know, the lies that are being said about me about that. And it's like, stop, stop. Let's take a breath. And what's really going on here? And the lesson that I learned from that one is, is that when something is being told or retold and is not 
quite right is that I have to say something about it in a kind way. That's my lesson in that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. But you know, if I don't do it, it's going to keep coming around in different perspectives, different ways, different ways. And so if I should, and, and I'm always saying this, let's, let's handle them when they're little, not when they're huge and we get the, the, the cosmic two by four that I talked about yesterday or the day before. Um, so anyway, with that, how about if we be aware, be mindful, see how the energy is flowing to you today the essence of the information that we receive today. How is it, how does that look for you? How does it unfold? Um, and, you know, and just take what resonated with you, right? What resonated with you and what didn't resonate with you, that's okay, just let it go. Just let it go. Um, that was probably meant for someone else. Um, and, you know, the only thing that we can do is do the very best we can in the moment that we're doing it. It's just the best we can. And if I if I do, do it with a good heart, then I know I'm heading in the right direction. Yeah. All right. <laughs> with that, oh my gosh. Oh, I promised, I promised, I promised that I was going to say something about the, the classes that are coming up because I completely forget to do that. Um, for those who are looking to learn more about the shamanic journey, um, have not done their first journey yet, um, but they're looking for assistance with that. Um, we're doing a class here at the Academy. All the classes are happening here in Wisconsin, the physical classes. Um, and that is uh, August 11th and 12th, I believe, that weekend um, here. Um, and we'll be doing our um, power animal retrieval. We'll be doing that and um, working with our power animal. Um, learning about the upper world, um, learning the definition of the middle world. We're not going to do middle world work in this particular uh, class because to me that that is you, you need some experience under your belt before you do a middle middle world. Okay, um, so it's the introduction to shamanic journey, and then in September, the weekend of the twenty second is the magic of Hogwarts. And I'm co-teaching that class with Minnie Kansman. This is a promise that we made years and years and years ago, and we can actually do that now. Um, and that is to lay, help you either strengthen the foundation of your uh, spiritual gifts of divination and um, a whole bunch of other stuff <laughs> that I can't remember right now. Um, or if you're just starting out consciously on your path, this will help you lay a good foundation to build off from um for your for uh your spiritual gifts okay and then in october that first weekend in october yeah first weekend of october is um the mystical healings uh with polly jola bay we're going to she's going to be working on the heart, heart chakra and she's going to be coming out from massachusetts here um that october and so if you are interested in healing work and um not procrastinating that healing work that would and you want to do this in person um polly joe will be here um, and she's also offering time slots for pers uh, individual uh, healing sessions um the friday before class and the monday after class okay you can just contact me about that i think that's it so enjoy the rest of your monday and we'll see you back here tomorrow for tomorrow's card draw so bama mina until we see each other again.